They're the happiest, friendliest, most lovable people you're ever likely to meet. Just being around them is a joy, an absolute delight. But there's something slightly wrong. They suffer from a rare and baffling genetic disorder called Williams syndrome, what the scientists call a beautiful mystery. The Willies, as they're affectionately known, also have low IQs, but they can still teach the rest of us a thing or two. They could just hold the secret to that age-old argument of nature versus nurture, the secret of what makes us tick, what makes us the way we are. I'm outgoing, I'm funny, and I love dancing. Paul Notman is 16. He likes football, cricket and dance music. He's the most popular kid in his country high school, yet Paul is not like his mates. You strike me as a very happy person. Yes, I am. Are you always happy? Yes. Sarah Noon can't add five and three, but she knows every word that Lennon and McCartney ever wrote. These are the special mysteries of a special condition. It's called Williams Syndrome. They're very friendly, almost to the extreme. There's no prejudice. There's no religion or anything that comes into Race. meeting people. They don't right. care who they are, whether they're rich or poor, fat or skinny, short or tall, black or white. William syndrome sufferers are missing 26 genes. They have low IQs and distinctive elfin features. But since the syndrome was identified 40 years ago, other traits have become evident. The willies, as they're known, are sensitive to noise and love music. And they're extremely sociable, blessed with friendly, outgoing natures. In fact, they have what's referred to as cocktail party personalities. Hi, Olivia. Nice to meet you, Peter. How do you do, Olivia? You Very look well. beautiful today. Hey, Peter. Um, how long has 60 minutes been on for? 25 years. Whoa. That's a long time. Yeah. How you been? Oh, well, I've been well. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, good. He was the sort of baby that probably only a mother could love him. He wasn't the best looking fella as a little bloke and big mouth and huge eyes, which he actually grew into, didn't he? But like many people, Paul Notman's parents, Bill and Geraldine, had never heard of William syndrome when he was diagnosed at four and a half. Do you think, you know, why did it happen? Why us? It's the hows, the whys. Is there someone to blame? Is it either of us? Is, you know, is it something we've done? I've got kindness. Big fan to pay. In fact, I'll the genetic first. disorder that causes William syndrome is completely random. It's called a beautiful mystery. Beautiful because of the irrepressible personalities it creates. By the time Paul hit kindergarten, he was already the life of the party. Do you like to be surrounded by people? Yeah. Why, is that? Why is that? I don't know, it just makes me excited. So I have so many friends and they care about me. And I appreciate that too. Do they love you? Yeah, everyone does. Sarah too displays the sociable, outgoing nature that makes William syndrome children a joy to be around. They love other people being happy, uh, relate probably better to adults than other children because there's more of an understanding there. Uh, but there's a real empathy for, um, for people who are sad and, uh, or, or upset. This is my mum and she's cuddly, <laughs> nice and I love her very much. Oh, 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 
This beautiful mystery affects just one in 20,000 people and it's often associated with physical defects like heart problems. But it's through their outgoing personalities that people like Sarah and Paul may yet be able to teach us something about ourselves. Indeed, they may hold the key to what makes us the way we are. So if you see a picture of someone that you think looks very friendly and you for sure would like to go talk with them, then you would answer this one. Definitely would. That's right. Marilee Martins of Melbourne University right. has just completed the most comprehensive study so of Williams syndrome one. ever undertaken. Picture. Would you like to go up and talk to that person? Definitely would. Would you like to talk with him? Definitely would not. She set out to discover what makes yes. people like Paul so friendly. Yes. Definitely. Definitely would. She's got a big smile and she looks friendly. Peter, this is a slice of the human brain and the structure that's colored there in blue is the amygdala, which is believed to be one of the critical structures that's associated with what we would term sociability or friendliness. So we're looking at that structure in individuals who have Williams syndrome to see if we can help make a link between brain structure and how that affects behavior. Paul and 28 other Williams Syndrome individuals underwent brain scans, the largest test group ever assembled in the world. What the test revealed was the amygdala, the part of the brain which dictates our sociability, was larger in the Williams Syndrome subjects. The discovery may unlock the age-old secret of whether our personalities are formed by nature or nurture. I would say they help give us a glimpse into that. We do feel like our study is very significant in that we've been the first group that have actually measured out the volume, the actual size of the amygdala in individuals with Williams and compared it to others. So give, it's just giving us a better picture of the relationship between the brain and behavior. And then I saw her face. But as some secrets of Williams syndrome are being revealed, others remain a tantalizing mystery. For instance, the incredible affinity with music, another remarkable symptom. As soon as a song comes on the radio, it doesn't matter what era it's from, Sarah's straight onto the words and has this amazing memory for music. Gives her the ability to go into her own world, which sometimes is a good thing. It's a, a release from all the pressures and um, difficulties that uh, someone with a disability has, trying to keep up with everyone else. In her own world, uh, she can control it and enjoy it and um, dance along and keep fit. <laughs> In the United States, the Williams Syndrome affinity with music has been well documented. Gloria Lenhoff is the Williams Syndrome poster girl. She can sing in perfect pitch in 30 languages. In Macedonian, Korean, Bulgarian, Yiddish, you name it. Hey yo! It seems to be for a lot of the children that, that it's, it's just innate and they have uh, extra sensitive hearing, hyperacusis, which means that they hear a lot of more, more of the background of the music, they hear the harmony very strongly, they hear all sorts of other noises that we, we're able to block out. Hey Jude, don't be afraid. Sarah often will sing a harmony rather than a melody. Um, and that's harder, isn't it? Yeah, well, for us, for most people it is, yes. But uh, not for Sarah, that's what she tunes into often. Mm. Why do you love the Beatles so much? Oh, I love their rhythm. Their rhythm? And what else? Their voice. You're, you're nearly as good as them. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, you, don't make it bad. Take a sad song and make it better. 
One of the most poignant aspects of Williams syndrome is that those who have it are aware of their limitations. They're astute enough to know that they're different. Has she ever, or has she ever looked at you in the eyes and said, why am I like this? Yes. Yeah, so there is that understanding. I guess the sadness about Williams syndrome is that she's actually aware that she's different. Yes, and I suppose like all parents, you know, we, I have my frustrations too when, when it's difficult for Sarah to learn something or do something and uh, Sarah often apologises to me for that. But that's probably more the nature of having Williams syndrome, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I think the, the children I've met, other children with Williams syndrome, are pretty much the same. They, are, they feel sorry that they can't do more. Come on, guys. And you understand that you're not normal? Yes. So how does it make you feel knowing your friends are normal and, and you're not? I don't mind it. Because everyone likes me and I'm just me. It's hard for people to understand what we are going through and how sometimes we are happy but sometimes we aren't because we go through hard stages in our life. They discriminate and they do things that are wrong towards us and uh, I'd personally like it to not happen anymore. What sort of things do they do that are wrong? They look at you, they stare at you, they, they just do things that are uncomfortable. So difficult being a teenager for me because I get, hard, I get hard times at school, hard times at home. Don't pick on me, I don't like it at all. It's only been four decades since William Syndrome was identified and much is still a mystery. Even life expectancy is unknown. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Oh, yeah. I can't imagine Sarah not being with us. Um, and I, at the moment, don't think there's any need to think otherwise, yeah. They're not private times where you actually wonder about her future? I do, but I think probably it's um, a safety mechanism that I have inside that doesn't let me go very far ahead. Mm. Paul and Sarah and others like them may or may not hold the key to how our personalities are formed. Whatever the case though, we could all learn a thing or two from the Willies. In some ways, the Willies people have um, got the better side of life. It's been called a beautiful mystery. He's more than a beautiful mystery, aren't you, mate? Yeah. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.